cryopreservation of potato shoot tips. The diversity of flora on planet Earth is at an increased risk of being lost forever due to climate change, droughts, floods, plagues, diseases, environmental contamination, and socio-cultural changes. However, there is a new method of conservation called cryopreservation, which allows the conservation of plant diversity under controlled conditions for centuries. Organs, tissues, embryos, and seeds of plants can be preserved in liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees centigrade for virtually an unlimited amount of time. When material is required, it is thawed and samples are recovered into complete plants. The present video explains the cryopreservation process of clonal crops, using potato as an example. In vitro culture. Cryopreservation work is done in laminar flow chambers. The tools are sterilized at 250 degrees centigrade after each step. Explants consist of four to five stem segments, each with one to two axillary buds, which are placed in test tubes containing Murashige and Skoog medium with vitamins and glycine. The composition of the Murashige and Skoog medium is listed in Table 1. The plant material is incubated under normal growth conditions for three to four weeks at 20 degrees centigrade with a light intensity of 96 micromoles per meter squared per second in a photo period of 16 hours. For the final multiplication cycle, 80 to 90 one axillary bud uninodal stem segments are placed in deep 90 by 25 millimeter petri dishes, again on Murashige and Skoog medium. The petri dishes with the uninodal stem segments are incubated for five to 10 days under normal condition followed by 10 to 20 days of cold acclimation at 7 degrees centigrade with a light intensity of 15 micromoles per meter squared per second and 1 to 4 days at 4.5 degrees centigrade with a light intensity of 30 micromoles per meter squared per second. Excision of shoot tips. Use long 23 centimeter forceps, a scalpel with a number 11 blade, and work on a stack of two to three sterile bond papers as support. Excise the shoot tips under a stereo microscope using 10 time magnification from the cold acclimated in vitro plants. The age of the plants can vary from 16 to 34 days depending on the genotype. The excised shoot tips should have two to four leaf primordia and be 0.8 to 1.2 millimeter long and 0.3 to 0.7 millimeter wide. Place 10 shoot tips on each 10 by 10 millimeter filter paper. The filter papers are supported on Murashige and Skoog medium, which is outlined on Table 1. Pre-treatment for cryo. Label 1.8 milliliter cryo vials with a permanent marker and a cryogenic label for double identification. Disinfect two one milliliter rubber pipette bulbs with 70% alcohol and install them aseptically on two sterile glass pasture pipettes. One of the pipettes is used for handling the loading solution and the other for the plant vitrification solution too. Homogenize the loading solution with a vortex mixer and dispense approximately one milliliter per test tube. The composition of the loading solution is listed in Table 2. Fill a pan with flaked ice and place the stock falcon tube containing plant vitrification solution 2 into ice to pre-chill it. Treatment with cryoprotectant solutions. Submerge a filter paper containing the 10 shoot tips into loading solution. Dip the filter paper with a smooth motion, shake and check that all shoot tips are off the filter paper and are submerged in the loading solution. Treat the shoot tips for 20 minutes in loading solution. Record the end time of the treatment on the label. Remove the loading solution from the tube 
with the pasture pipette used to dispense the loading solution, the shoot tip should remain at the bottom of the tube without any loading solution. Vortex, the plant vitrification solution to and dispense approximately one milliliter into the tube containing the shoot tips. The composition of the plant vitrification solution two is listed in table three. Treat the shoot tips for 50 minutes with plant vitrification solution two at zero degrees centigrade on flaked ice. Place five by 20 millimeter sterile aluminum strips in a sterile Petri dish. Make a fold of approximately three millimeters at the end of each strip, freezing in liquid nitrogen. Disinfect the freezing container and its support with 70% alcohol 10 to 15 minutes prior to the end of the plant vitrification solution to treatment. Wear cryogenic gloves, a cryogenic apron, and safety goggles. Fill the freezing container slowly with liquid nitrogen using a four liter doer. One to two minutes prior to the end of the 50 minute plant vitrification solution to treatment, uncap the cryovials, place them in the freezing container and allow them to float on top of the liquid nitrogen surface for approximately one minute. Carefully place the cryovials in the holes of the holder. The liquid nitrogen level should be 1 to 1.5 centimeters above the mouth of the vials. Suck up the shoot tips with the plant vitrification solution 2 using the sterile plant vitrification solution 2 pasture pipette. Then rest the pipette at the bottom of the tube and slowly expel the plant vitrification solution too. The shoot tips should be contained in a small volume of about 10 microliters of plant vitrification solution too at the pipette tip. Hold the aluminum strip by the folded end and place the shoot tips together with the drop of plant vitrification solution too in the central or distal part of the strip. At exactly 50 minutes after the start of the exposure to plant vitrification solution 2, quickly plunge the aluminum strip with the shoot tips into liquid nitrogen and transfer the strip into the labeled cryovial. Always transfer the strip below the surface of the liquid nitrogen. Place a single strip containing 10 shoot tips in each cryovial. However, in one cryovial, place three strips or 30 shoot tips. These samples will be thawed later to obtain survival and recovery rates. Cool the lids of the cryovials in liquid nitrogen. Cap the cryovials with forceps, pressing them down for the final adjustment. Label the top tab of three aluminum canes for cryovials and pre-cool them for about two to three minutes in one of the liquid nitrogen filled containers in the laboratory tank. Transfer the cryovials onto the cryocanes with needle nose pliers. Expose the cryovials for a minimal amount of time to the environment. Submerge the cane into one of the cryo tank containers. Store the cryovial containing the 30 shoot tips for viability assessment in a separate container. Thawing of shoot tips. Thaw the shoot tips by groups of accessions. Install a one milliliter rubber pipette bulb previously disinfected with 70% alcohol onto a sterile glass pasture pipette. Dispense two milliliters of rewarming solution per sterile 15 milliliter screw cap test tube. The composition of the rewarming solution is shown in Table 4. Label the caps. Place three approximately 25 by 30 millimeter sterile filter papers into a Petri dish containing recovery medium whose composition is shown in Table 5. The shoot tips will be placed for the first nine days on this recovery medium. 
Prepare and disinfect the freezing container. Transfer the cryo vial into the container using needle nose pliers. Carefully open the cryo vial. Place a filter paper measuring approximately 30 by 35 millimeters on top of a stack of three to six sheets of sterile bond paper. Distribute three filter papers measuring approximately 10 by 10 millimeters on top of this larger filter paper. Transfer the aluminum strips individually to test tubes with rewarming solution. Dip the strips quickly and ensure that all shoots are released from the aluminum strip and submerged in the rewarming solution. Treat the shoot tips for 20 minutes in rewarming solution at room temperature. Remove the shoot tips from the rewarming solution with a pasture pipette and place them for one to three minutes on top of the small sterile filter papers. To discharge the shoot tips on the recovery culture medium, slide the small filter paper over the larger filter paper. Distribute the shoots evenly. Recovery cycle and assessment of survival and recovery. Seal the Petri dish with parafilm and wrap it in aluminum foil to provide darkness. Incubate for nine days at 20 degrees centigrade. After nine days, transfer the shoot tips from each filter paper to an individual Petri dish, placing them directly onto the culture medium. Place a sheet of aluminum foil on top of the Petri dishes for diffused light and incubate for four days at 20 degrees centigrade with a 16-hour photo period. Remove the aluminum foil after four days. Incubate for 14 days at 20 degrees centigrade at a light intensity of 96 micromoles per meter squared per second in a photo period of 16 hours. The first assessment of survival and recovery rates is done 20 to 30 days after thawing. A shoot tip is classified as survived if it has green tissue and as recovered if it is sprouting without any intermediate or observable callus formation. Transfer survived and recovered shoot tips into 25 by 150 millimeter test tubes with MS medium, whose composition is shown in Table 1. And placing a maximum of five plants per test tube. Rooted plants and small buds are transferred directly. For plants with an elongated stem without roots, make a cut at the base of the plant to stimulate root formation. Incubate the plants for 25 days under normal in vitro growth conditions. The second and final evaluation is done 50 to 55 days after thawing. Only samples that have developed into complete in vitro plants with an elongated stem, normal leaves, a shoot apex, and roots are considered as recovered. Temporary storage. Cryo storage is carried out in cryo boxes with a capacity of 100 cryo vials. The boxes occupy predefined and fixed positions within the storage cryo tank. Label the four sides of the cryo box with a permanent marker and cryogenic labels. Sterilize two ice pans suitable for containing liquid nitrogen and the cryo boxes with ultraviolet light for 20 minutes. Wear cryogenic gloves, a cryogenic apron, and safety goggles. Fill the pans with liquid nitrogen to a height of three to five centimeters. Slowly and carefully, place the cryo boxes in one of the trays.
transfer the aluminum canes with cryovials to a pan containing liquid nitrogen. Place the canes horizontally in the pan. Transfer the vials to the cryo box. Place each accession in a separate predetermined row, leaving excess positions free. Assign locations with a BARS code scanner. Periodically, fill the pan with liquid nitrogen as needed, ensuring that the base of the vials, 0.5 to 1 centimeter, is always submerged in liquid nitrogen. Close the cryo box. A second person lifts the stainless steel cryo box from the cryo tank and removes the safety rod. Quickly lift the cryo box on one of its sides with a spatula and place it in the predetermined location in the cryo box rack. Quickly insert the safety rod and resubmerge the rack into the cryo tank. For transfers with larger tanks, work with three people. Two people operate the cryo box racks while a third person transfers the boxes. Tilt the racks slightly, about 10 degrees, toward the person lifting them to avoid the boxes falling out of the rack. Through a hole in the back of the rack, the removal of the boxes is facilitated by pushing them with pliers and transferring them with the free hand. Install the safety rod before re-immersing the rack do not transfer more than two boxes at a time to avoid the boxes being exposed for more than 30 seconds to the environment. Transfer to the cryobank. Only transfer those accessions that meet the minimum recovery and quality criteria into permanent storage in the cryobank. The accessions must have a minimum of 30% recovery with no sign of contamination. If these conditions are not met, the entire cryo run for that accession is discarded and reprocessed later. Sterilize two pans suitable for containing liquid nitrogen with ultraviolet light as previously mentioned. Prepare two cryo boxes, one each for the cryo bank and the other for the backup tank. Fill the pans with three to five centimeters of liquid nitrogen Place temporary cryo boxes containing the vials to be transferred into permanent storage in one of the pans and the cryo bank and backup cryo boxes in the other. Positions are assigned automatically by reading the barcodes of the boxes and the cryo vials. Transfer 10 vials to the cryo bank box and two vials to the safety backup box. When the cryo boxes are full, transfer them to the transport tank. Transfer the cryo boxes to the final tank in the cryo bank and the backup tank. The boxes occupy a predefined and fixed position in the cryo bank and backup tanks. Monitoring of liquid nitrogen level and refilling of tanks. Some cryo tanks come equipped with a monitor that measures the internal temperature and height of liquid nitrogen within the tank. In smaller tanks, the height of liquid nitrogen is measured with a cryogenic ruler. It is recommended to keep the liquid nitrogen level of the tanks at a minimum height of 30 to 35 centimeters and to keep daily records. Refill the tanks every one to three weeks with liquid nitrogen or as needed. Wear a cryogenic apron, industrial cryogenic gloves, safety goggles, and face shield during filling. Vision for the future. Cryopreservation is the most appropriate method for long-term conservation of plant genetic resources which cannot be stored as conventional or orthodox seed. Cryopreserved potato shoot tips can be conserved for decades and even centuries 
theoretically without suffering any reduction in viability rates. For potato, cryopreservation is the most economical method requiring minimal space for the long-term conservation of genetic resources collections. In a space of one meter cube, we can conserve 1,800 accessions with 100 samples per accession. To use the material, a single vial is thawed and approximately 50 days later, the plants can be transplanted to the greenhouse. Let's save the biodiversity for future generations. Using the cryopreservation.